And as a result of all of this litigation, the FBI was pressured and the Justice Department was pressured to undergo, at least to begin, at least the appearance of a criminal investigation into Mrs. Clinton's handling of the emails. And as we've learned over the last several weeks, the, obviously the FBI decided not to prosecute or recommend a prosecution and the Clinton, uh, excuse me, the Obama Justice Department decided not to uh, prosecute her based on uh, the alleged recommendation of uh, Mr. Comey, the FBI director. But as we find out more details about the FBI investigation, we found out that a lot of these uh, investigations that the FBI was undertaking didn't take place but for Judicial Watch's pressure from the litigation. The witnesses weren't uh, questioned until it became clear Judicial Watch was either going to get discovery or was it getting discovery and would be questioning some of these same witnesses. It was so bad that we just learned in the latest FBI document dump that the FBI was using documents produced to Judicial Watch under the Freedom of Information Act with redactions. So they couldn't even get the full document. And they were using those documents to question the witnesses. And of course, there's a lot of outrage about the FBI immunity agreements or Department of Justice immunity agreements granted uh, Cl uh, the Clinton aides uh, at issue in this case, and we'll get into that later. Uh, but uh, just so you know, there will be more Clinton emails coming out thanks to the Judicial Watch litigation. Again, it was our litigation that, again, forced the FBI to do the half-baked investigation it did, as it, as it turns out, but it did produce new Clinton emails, including 14,900 emails, at least that she didn't want uh, uh, anyone to see because she deleted them. And many of those deleted emails were uncovered by the FBI and turned over to the State Department, and uh, several thousand of them are going to be turned over to the American people as a result of litigation. First, by Judicial Watch and News This Week is that Vice News, which is uh, Jason Leopold of Vice News, which is separately pursuing litigation, is getting even more emails. Uh, so the litigation is going to re result in Clinton emails that she didn't want produced at all to the American people being produced perhaps even before Election Day, at least a portion of them. And on top of that, I think we should point out that uh, uh, these emails will be produced even after the election. So no matter what happens on Election Day, this Clinton email scandal is going to continue. There's going to be continued pressure for a criminal investigation of what we uh, know went on no matter who's elected president. And uh, so I wouldn't necessarily count out a criminal investigation of Mrs. Clinton even under a Clinton administration because I don't think the attorney general that Mrs. Clinton would appoint would have much in the way of an argument to stop the special counsel from being appointed. How can that person investigate Mrs. Clinton without uh, obviously a conflict of interest being so apparent uh, that would require a special counsel to be appointed? I think the public would demand it. And obviously under a Trump, uh, Trump administration, unless he acts like every other Republican administration has in the past, uh, he seems committed to uh, doing a more thorough investigation as well. So no matter what happens, I think there's going to be a more significant criminal investigation in the new administration. But I also want to pull, call attention to the fact that Congress has been making a lot of noise. Uh, the FBI director was testifying earlier this week to Congress. But let's highlight the fact that Congress can take steps that it's refusing to take to hold Mrs. Clinton accountable on this email scandal. And I think this is something important to remember. You know, Mrs. Clinton testified to Congress that she, tur she turned over all of her government emails. We know that to be false. And Congress, what did it do? It referred that question of whether she committed perjury to the Department of Justice for a criminal investigation. Well, who are they fooling? They know what's going to happen at the Obama Justice Department. They already know where the FBI director comes down on that. Why isn't there a contempt citation pending bef uh, against Mrs. Clinton now? Why do they have to wait for the Justice Department to do something? If they think that she was in contempt of Congress, the way they treated uh, in terms of her testimony being incorrect or false, and the fact that emails were destroyed after Congress subpoenaed them, uh, why is it that Congress isn't holding Mrs. Clinton in contempt? The answer is somewhat obvious. They have an election, and they don't want uh, accountability in a true sense of the word to get in the way of their quest for uh, retaining Congress. And I'm talking about the Republican leadership. And the other uncomfortable point I'm going to bring up, at least from the point of view I think of many Republican leaders, is that they can also impeach Mrs. Clinton. And they don't have to wait for her to be president to impeach her. Uh, Congress retains the ability to impeach a federal officer 
for conduct, whether that officer was in, in it's still an, whether that officer is still an officer or not. So they can impeach Mrs. Clinton for misconduct as Secretary of State right now. And you uh, tell that to a Republican member of Congress, and the general response you get is stunned silence, but it's true. And uh, the sanction would be, this is the way it works in the House, is you impeach the member, uh, the, the uh, official in the House, and that's kind of like an indictment, and that's moved to the Senate for a trial. And the result of the Senate trial, if there's a conviction, one of the sanctions could be ineligibility for future public office. Boy, wouldn't that be an interesting process at least to begin or talk about? But you don't want to hear any Republicans talking about that. But the fact is, Mrs. Clinton can be impeached for her conduct as Secretary of State. So the next time you hear Congress complaining about the FBI and the Department of Justice, you know, and the cover-up and the, and the wired investigation that resulted in no criminal charges on the Clinton email matter, you know, that's all fine and good. But remember, the Congress has independent tools available to it under the Constitution uh, to prosecute uh, the Clinton scandal, and it's there are tools they're refusing to use. So I think there needs to be some accountability on that.